Good morning. Such a nice feeling camping this way. Oh, and of course the tent's not wet. I think that's what it is from now on. We can't camp over 6,500 feet. <laughs> and yes, I know I look absolutely ravishing this morning. Didn't I tell you I was gonna look worse as the trip went on? It's amazing how different it is camping under warm conditions. The wet and moisture and the cold makes all the difference in the world and how much stuff I need to bring in the tent. If I could just like bring my sleeping stuff, oh my gosh, packing up would be so fast. Pack your tent so the base of the tent, the stronger material, is wrapped around the mesh. And I would put this stuff inside in the order that I'm gonna put it together. Like let's say it's rainy or something, you have to go quick. Well this comes first, so I put it in order. Since I'm putting it on a rack, I'm gonna pick the flattest side. I wanted this to be the thing that I can just bring it over and keep inside my tent after I pull all my camp stuff out. The days that you're going through mud and stuff and things are splashing all over it. So that's where this sack came in handy. And this is actually stronger and thicker, 33 liters. This system worked out beautifully. My event waterproof, it's just a large. Then what I've done is I slid the ground sheet on one side of the bag and I put my picnic blanket on the other side. I already showed you this in the other episode, putting this on the back of the bike. Changing of the shoes. Just like Mr. Rogers used to change his sweater every morning. That's what, this is my little ritual. Barely have anything left now, but it's, for some reason everything still looks totally full. We have a nice thing about this cargo net. There's my trash. I look like a chipmunk. <laughs> Guess that's not too bad of a thing. My knee is so messed up. That's the other reason I was tossing all night. It was like throbbing pain. So I learned that pushing things up with my knee didn't hurt it so much because I didn't have the pain that I had yesterday. And yesterday we walked the bike down the mountain. Just a different pressure on your knee joints. And what will I attempt this morning? To brush my hair. This will be the second time on this trip. To make my face look less puffy. Boy, my body from the last two days, wow. I can't even believe what we biked yesterday. I went 58 miles, I think, my first day up the climb on my trip last year. I was on the salsa cutthroat. We'd have to do like 68 miles today, but I'm thinking if I can do 58 uphill, 3,000 feet on day one, that was my first day bikepacking with all the bags, I should be able to do 68 on a downhill, gradual downhill. I have a nubbier tire, so I'm not gonna roll as fast down the, down the hill. So I guess we'll find out. I want help up the, up the Loman climb. I have no interest in climbing that. In last year's video, day two, you can go down it. Look at this cool table they made with the stump and the rocks. There's a cave over there. You could sit in there, have a little sexy time. It has so much beach. That's what makes it so special. Zinc, zinc oxide it, baby. I must have rinsed some off yesterday when I was rinsing my face in a stream because I have some peeling on the top of my nose, which I don't like because that's I got a lot of skin damage here as a child in Florida. We lived in West Palm Beach. And was, my mom was really great though at protecting our skin, but you know, as kids, you can only do so much. I look like a ghost. It will slowly fade. Aw, those people gave me the beer yesterday. He brought me over a coffee. He goes, do you want a coffee for the road? And I said, no, because then I'm going to have to pee. <laughs> I asked him if Loman served breakfast. And he goes, yeah, sourdough does. And I go, sourdough? I'm thinking, I don't think that was the name of the place. He said, no, that's where we go for breakfast. I go, wait. He goes, it's like a mile up the road. I go, no, 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 no. The place I'm talking about is like 10 miles. He said, no, there's a place called sourdough. They serve a great breakfast. I'm so happy he came over because I thought Loman the place where I had the best sandwich ever. It's like ham, grilled chicken, pineapple. It was the only place that was food. We're gonna go to a new place.
Look at this place. You can see now why I didn't see it. I was on the other side of the road last year and there's trees here. How cute is this? Oh my gosh. Sourdough Lodge restaurant. They have, mo it's motel, cabins, RV, ice, beer, pop, propane, fishing, supplies. Hey. Uh -huh. ATM machine. Oh. <laughs> Store, ice cream, and there's your little restaurant over there. How cute. A uh, menu, please. One pancake. This is their bacon. They gave you a really nice amount. This was $10. Boy, I tell you, these guys know how to make breakfast out in these little towns because these guys are so particular about their bacon and stuff. Like the butter and the bacon was outstanding. I guess it's a brand Dailies. So they had Wi Fi. It's 85 miles if I go along the water and do Horseshoe Bend climb. And then I think like 84 if I stay along through Idaho City. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. The fact that I think I'm gonna ride 85, 86 miles today is a bit daunting. It doesn't seem realistic being on a mountain bike with bags. On a road bike, yeah. I really don't wanna camp out again. Please let it be over. I'm all done. I'm finito. I just had my pancakes. <laughs> it's over. End of trip, please. End of trip, please. Kirkham Hot Spring. Remember we pulled in here last year? I met the host in day two of the first season. I'm not gonna show it to you today, but I will show you video I captured on a drive in the winter. I'll insert it now. Yep, that's it. Up to that mountain. Good for you. He's like seven years old. That's great. Will you see the one behind this? I think it's like three to four hundred thousand dollars. The sides pop out. Like the perfect thing if you wanted to live full time, right? And he said he gets about third, twelve to fifteen miles per gallon. Oh. Camping, fishing. Whoops. Food, tons to drink. Oh, it's it is. It's a little mercantile. It's just like this is back in the day, right? Like it has everything you could possibly want. I mean, it even has shovels, stuff for your car. This is awesome. Medicine. Oh my gosh, hairbrushes. Like, look at this battery. The guys inside said they felt that it was a six to eight percent, and then there were sections of that were harder. So I don't know. I mean, look, everyone's going the other way which means there's gonna be a ton of traffic. I think I just need to go towards Idaho City and just go after this climb. It is what it is. If I can push my bicycle up 16 to 20% grades for, for two and a half hours, I should be able to do this. But while we're going along this whole trip with my stupid ideas, why not end with one? What's one more? And yes, I know I might look disgusting. And yes, I'm eating a Fat Boy ice cream sandwich and an a and root beer. And I just finished pancakes and bacon and an Arizona iced tea, sugared up. Give me up that climb. Wow, oh my gosh, there's like nobody there. Oh, there's only one truck. Oh my gosh, don't tell me they're not open. Oh geez, please. Putting my bike exactly where I did last year. Closed until two. Look at the size of their cinnamon rolls. So my chances of getting a ride are very low. Oh, see like this guy, he's got like a thing. Oh, he could take me with my bicycle on the back. Oh, he's turning there, so no, he couldn't. Caterpillar crossing the road. I feel like I wanna help him. You're gonna make it, you're moving pretty well. Oh, you just did a roll. Hey, that's gonna be like me today. Shit, somebody's coming. Come here, buddy. Woo! We almost got you. Come here. Oh, oh, I wonder if you already hit. Let's put you in a nice, cool. He's trying to give you a little shade. <sighs> All right. Well, it says Idaho City is 33 miles, Boise is 70. I came down this. This is, oh gosh, I hope I can. But the other way is super busy. See how 
this wall is almost so that's going along the river you have that you're right on the white line and then the, where I'm standing is the river and it goes down a cliff to the river so when you get these two campers pulling at the same time there's nowhere really for them to go I don't know what I'm hesitating about I don't my I have two choices and they both suck so you just I'll just pick the quieter one it's 1240 I've gone 14 miles let's see how long it takes us to climb this mountain wow come on little honey Come on, little sister. Come on and shake it. I know that's what they're saying right now. I'm trying to make it so YouTube doesn't flag it. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like 90 out. Whew. Oh, fire. Indeed. This is going to be quite a struggle. Yeah, we're not to the steep part yet. <sighs> I'm a little bit dirty, but it's a little bit rolling stone. I can't even sing. Oh my God, such a long way to go. We can do this. We did dirt rocks up cliff sides of mountains. We can do this, damn it. And you see people like Tour de France and they're doing like this and they're breathing, biking. They're not smiling at you. It regulates your breathing. Chewing gum can also do that. Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls, he almost always had gum in his mouth. Fuck. I know where. Somebody help me. I feel like I'm going nowhere. <sighs> Saturday Night Fever. I love that movie. John Travolta. Damn, watching him dance. Woo! Staying alive. Yep, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm staying alive. You gotta get up there. I can't even risk my. Time for some bike dancing. I don't think it's a good idea though, because it uses up energy. Love to dance, I car dance all the time. <laughs> it's so hot out. And my bags, I had to wait a few minutes for them to cool down. It was so, there's the burning hot, the black just absorbing the heat. Wow, my eyes are just burning. I mean, I just, it doesn't matter. Salt burns, salt, it's all salt. Glad I had all that bacon. Yes, I had the electrolytes and all that stuff. Then we were way down there. Oh my God, is Queensryche, Queensryche finally kicking in. I'm a huge Queensryche fan. Like I rarely listen to them, but they've been my favorite forever. I'm losing my hearing, I'm shouting. So that means I'm at the point now of overexerting. I'm almost at the top. Water in the eyeballs. I'm good again. <laughs> Superman never made any money. Saving the world, solid, grindy. The world will never see another man like him. This goes out to one of my exes. This is parts of his song. It's about our relationship, the good parts. We love to play air drums to this. Love us, love us, just love us. <laughs> Chemicals between us. He died of cancer last year. My favorite boyfriend ever. Absolute favorite. Take me to the top. I'm ready for whatever it takes. Cause I love the adrenaline in my veins, baby. There it is in a nutshell. I think we've been pedaling for two hours up this hill. If you watched last year, day two, have this huge boom. Well, where I started is like a good chunk already down the mountain. So this whole extra part is a surprise to me. I, I'm seeing a little bit of hope. This guy is closer to my face. Oh my God. I don't see the word summit. No bathroom, nothing here, nothing, nothing. Oh my gosh. I can't hear, can't see. I can't remember what time I see how long it took us to get to this spot. We were at 14 miles and it was 1240. I know we've climbed 2,400 feet in that short distance. This was my song, White Snake. This was like when I was 18. It was my motivational song. Here I go again on my own. Boy, is that the most appropriate sentence for my life. 
I don't want to get too excited about a wee here. over on the other side of the road to sit down because to see the angle of the road it's going in the upward direction that downhill was super short-lived we have a long way to go to Boise almost 29 miles in Boise was 75 from that spot but I think there was an extra 10 so we need to go was it 85 I can't remember the numbers now it's 330 there is a part where we start to go downhill like 2% and if I have a headwind then I'm screwed because if there's a headwind then minus two becomes like plus one grade wise I'm a bit obsessed with grade a lot of people don't talk grade they talk miles if someone says oh it's 10 miles away I would be like well what's the grade because if it's 10 miles 1% well then I'm gonna be going like this for 10 miles if it's 5% grade, then I'm going to be going like this for 10 miles. What's the grade and the distance in the mileage? And that sort of tells you how much climbing there is. Oh, my eyes are so, like on fire. A hawk flies in here to catch some animal. I'm coming up to it. And then, of course, a car goes by and scares it. Like my one freaking moment of wildlife on this trip. I just had to stop. I can't pedal. I don't know what to do. I am depleted. I'm on the lowest gear. Next trip, I'm gonna find a place where I freaking get dropped off at the top of some like 15,000 foot mountain. <laughs> and all I do is go down. I'm really thirsty, I have no water. Looks like, looks like there's maybe some raw camping up here on the left. I'm gonna leave my bike balance there. So I'm gonna chug a ton of water here. We're not gonna make it to Boise. I didn't know about this whole second climb and I didn't realize that my downhill from last year started where I already had gone down a bit quite a bit so nice spot oh this is pretty oh really pretty okay wash all the salt off my face look at my legs look at that I tell you drinking that fresh cool water and then just getting your feet in there, rinse some of my legs off, all my shorts, crotch, arms, face, so much salt. Just sort of give you a burst of energy. I'm not there, you don't have the, I don't have the burst of energy yet, but I'm just gonna sit down and rest for a second. We're gonna make this. I'm not giving up yet, no way. This is still easier than two days ago. Okay, I feel better now. Sorry for all that bitching. I needed water, I needed replenishing, I needed some food. It's funny when you do climbs, like to just stop and get off to the side, sometimes it's harder than for my legs to get going. I almost feel like the break for me isn't great and I can't really eat. When it's such a strenuous climb, it's like the, the food doesn't feel great. So, I mean, I have the electrolytes and stuff in my water, but I'm not really drinking that much either, which I should, but when you're on the climb, I didn't, you know, I was gonna run out of water, so there were no streams. And I don't wanna carry a ton of water on a climb, so I just deal with it. So that's my issue. We're back on track. We're gonna finish this climb and then we're gonna go down into Idaho City. It's like five o'clock and the sun is beautiful right now. And I feel better. Moore's Creek Summit. We did it. We totally did it. We climbed 3,500 feet. That's not showing on my watch. That's a different screen. It goes five hours. We started out at like 4,000 feet. We went to 6,000 feet. Then we went back down to something and now we're back up to six. And let me just say, thank you. So I pictured like all my subscribers, like all on bicycles around me. Like I could hear your motivation and your comments on YouTube, Human on the Loose, because we're kind of in this together. You are a support system for me right? You're an inspiration for me. I pictured things you'd say in comments from other videos using it for this climb and the second climb. And I know part of my followers are my Strava family that I've had for like three years. My Strava family is really important to me. 
I love looking at people's rides. I love looking at their picture. It figures just as I was saying a really nice message to you guys, my phone starts flashing that it's full. Like I have no more space to shoot. So I just went in and deleted and now I don't remember what it recorded or not. And I have to get down this hill and I'm low on battery. All I want to say is you are important to me and I do pay attention to your comments and I appreciate them. They help me get up this grind of, of a, of a summit. So we summited and you were a part of it. So thank you for that. And now it's time to go wee all the way down. <laughs> and we made it to Idaho City. Oh my gosh, we did it. Now I just want to eat some dinner and then I can camp in some free spot. There's the historic downtown. We went there last year. Oh my gosh, everybody is just covered in dirt. Ooh, I feel like I just stepped back in time. I feel like I should be on a horse. Here is the ice cream place where I ran into Wayne. Could have taken a raw spot before I hit town. The reason I didn't was because I need to eat. I don't have any food at all. So I think there's some restaurants up here. Trudy's Kitchen, but it looks like it's closed. The liquor store. No, I think here, this is an actual restaurant. The gold line, it's like the bar or Freaking cute is this? You can belly up at the bar. Oh, look how huge it is. Okay, awesome. This is the Goldmine Grill and Saloon. Just about 35 miles north of Boise and about 35 minutes south of Loman, Idaho on Highway 21. Actually, it was a real piece of crap when I got here. He's kicking ass, put it that way. Horrible. Yeah, we're having fun. We've got a live band tonight. We'll live band, and he, it's Friday, and he's so awesome. He just took me in the back and is letting me put my tent in the back so that way I can drink more alcohol. There you go. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Got a half a rack of ribs, onion rings, cornbread, and a side salad. Yum. Just met this gentleman. We're not going to put him on camera, but listen to his degrees. Bachelor's Geology, 79. Bachelor's Geophysics, 1980, Boise State. Geophysicist with Union Oil, Standard of Ohio Petroleum, San Francisco Law School, JD. Environmental Analyst, Wells Fargo Bank. Loans and foreclosures, commercial, typically over 50 million, sometimes 150 million. Then get a tax law degree from Golden Gate University then a master's in business administration, telecommunications, and then a master's in international law. Then I did pre-med at Boise State, organic and biochem and upper division biology classes. And I'm an amateur extra ham radio operator. So he brings granite in his Honda Fit to do his landscaping. Look at you. Wow, those are, how are you picking those pieces up? That thing is huge. <laughs> Look at this, how it's stacked on the truck. So the owner is letting me camp in the back. I never go to bars sitting by myself and it's amazing how much happens when I do. But I do have quite the shining personality. He said nobody's in this trailer. So he recommended I put my tent right here. Oh my God, this is so cool. I love these little weird stories that play out. So the bar has been interesting, the different characters. I've always attracted people because I engage really asking questions and I really care about the answers. I think it's common maybe for people to ask you about, hey, where have you traveled to? Because they want to talk about where they've traveled. But that what happens is then they want information from me because they're like, oh, this girl's paying attention. And she's being so nice to me. <laughs> so I just have to like change a few things, you know? I'm so full. I actually couldn't finish the meat, the ribs. So I asked the bartender, I'm like, since I'm sleeping in the backyard, 
can you guys put this in the refrigerator for me and I'll get it in the morning? And they said, sure, no problem. Bartenders are absolutely fantastic here. They're open till two, which is great because then I can go to the bathroom right before I go to sleep. So I'm gonna actually just change my shirt and put some regular shorts on. And then I'm gonna go sit and listen to music. I did spend a fair amount of money here, $30, but you know, it was worth it. Like, I, cause I never go out, I move around so much. I don't really have friends in places. I don't really move around. It's kind of a, more of a vagabond kind of thing. I'm exploring different places, but I never established myself long enough anywhere really to establish friendships. By the way, and I'm very particular as you've learned if you've watched enough of my episodes. This food here at the gold mine, the half a rack, it had so much meat on it. Oh my gosh, and the meat came off the boat, it was just delicious, and the sauce was really unique. And you know, it was so nice, like, I asked for extra sauce, I thought they'd bring me a little plastic thing. They brought me, like, a whole bottle. I don't ever order onion rings, and for some reason, I decided to get it as a side. Outstanding. Wow. This is what they normally tasted like, I would be a huge onion ring eater. So they frost their mugs, which a lot of places do. But as the owner said, they keep the, the beer is almost like right before freezing. It was like so ice, ice cold. It was phenomenal. I've never had a beer this perfect in my life. And I love the mug with the handle. Look at the size of this beer. Regular patrons coming up to me, two people said to me tonight, you have such a great aura. I've had people come up to me in stores over the years. I'm talking about like over 20. My video got cut short because I'm running out of space on my phone. song I sung Every time I had to play While people sat there drunk Well you know what I'm not really going to shoot tomorrow, so I guess I'm kind of saying my goodbye now. 